All right. Uh, I'm Andrew Freeborn. I want to thank uh, everybody for coming today. Thank the organizers and the sponsors, and uh, for you guys for being here as well. So today, uh, I'm Andrew Freeborn. I work for a large bank in Omaha, Nebraska. And we're going to talk about uh, intro to web app testing with Matilda. So I picked this talk because I thought it would be pretty interesting to show uh, a lot of OWASP projects and kind of what I hear uh, from peers, at least back in Omaha, as far as how do I get into web app testing? How do I test websites? Is it some kind of magics? What do I do? It's not really magics, but you know, not knowing how to get into it is kind of kind of hard to get into it. So today we're going to cover uh, what is this Matilda Day? Uh, tools for the job, some uh, techniques that um, that I've learned from and, and uh, refer to for uh, learning and growing. Uh, learning with Matilda Day uh, demo and uh, some links in QA. So Matilde is an OWASP project. OWASP, if you're not familiar with them, they are an open source uh, based organization. They promote uh, standards, applications, uh, projects, and they really help to promote uh, knowledge within the community and help us all grow as a, as a community. And so one of these projects is uh, Matilde. It's uh, currently maintained by uh, Jeremy Druin. His uh, Twitter handle is uh, weaponized. And um, it's very active. He's uh, always adding uh, new features that we see in the field as far as uh, new vulnerabilities. And so it's constantly maintained with uh, new techniques and vulnerabilities. And it's an intentionally vulnerable website. So one of the problems of uh, learning and trying to, to test and kind of get access to these kind of applications is, no, how do I, you know, what do I, do I, how do I test? Where do I need to go? So Matilde is a vulnerable, is a intentionally vulnerable application a website that you run that has all kinds of vulnerabilities. And so with that, it's very pen test friendly. So I know that uh, I can uh, drill down to certain vulnerabilities and focus on those vulnerabilities and help me to um, focus and learn and grow, say with uh, SQL injection or uh, Brooklyn authentication. And so being an OWASP project, uh, there's emphasis on the uh, OWASP top 10 2013, uh, even back to 2010 and uh, 2007. But it's not just OWASP, it's you know, websites aren't just, you know, oh, it's OWASP, but they have focuses on web services and JSON attacks and XML. And these are things that we see all the time for different applications, no matter your vertical or where you're at. And with that, uh, it's very quick to set up and uh, highly accessible. So the tools for the job, it doesn't really take much to run this application. It's, um, if you have a relatively newish computer, you're able to, you should be able to install like a VMware player or VirtualBox or Hyper-V or even run your host OS. It's an Apache website, so it's pretty easy to drop in and go. If you want to install it, you know, 30 gigs is more than enough space, or I'm running it right now on 12 gigs of space, and four gigs of RAM on your uh, laptop or your uh, box you may have for the whole OS, but giving it a, a gig is, is well enough for this application. Now, of course, Matilda, uh, since it's OWASP, it's open source, it's currently on SourceForge and GitHub, so you're free to pull it down, look it apart, you know, take it apart, uh, add things for your organization, or even email back to Jeremy and say, hey, I've seen this vulnerability, can we talk about maybe adding this in, or I see this bug, and I found bugs, and talking with Jeremy and getting things fixed up and uh, you know, push back out to the community so everybody's benefiting from uh, those kind of experiences. And so one popular way that I found using Matilda is using it with a Samurai, D Samurai WTF Linux distro. It's a uh, live CD, or you can install it. And so the WTF is for a web testing framework. And so Samurai has not only Matilda, but DBWA and other tools, and kind of like a Kali, but more for web testing. So Kali is more offensive, but Samurai is more for like having an enclosed system with tools and applications that you can test and have an enclosed space so you're not worried about going to the internet for, to attack or to an internal to your organization. And with uh, Samurai, there's uh, the OWASP uh, Zap project. Similar to Burp Suite, but of course there's Burp Suite free on there and other open source tools that they have on there and free tools as well. So if you want to have it on Samurai, you can also put it on your uh, distribution or your, your OS as needed. So techniques for web testing, you know, it's really super fun to uh, point automated tools and beep you found SQL injection. Well, you know, there's a time and place for automated tools, but there's also a time and place for manual testing as well. So if, you know, both tools are very helpful. Automated tools really give you a super land, help you to identify, okay, based on these automated scans, I've seen that there's these SQL injection vulnerabilities, there's broken authentication. 
But if we just leave it at automated testing, what do we really learn from that? If I go to my boss and say, hey boss, I found 84 SQL injection entry points, he's gonna say, great, we're gonna be so awesome, those developers. Well, he's gonna say, you tested it, right? You validated that they're actually SQL injection points. Well, um, no. So how can I come, how can I actually test that? Like, how would I know? Do I use SQL map? Do I use manual testing? Do I use all these other tools? So there's a time and place for automated testing. There's also a time and place for manual testing and validation of these actual vulnerabilities that we find. But how do I test that? How do I just go to Google.com and start doing SQL map or these other injection attempts? Well, Matilda helps answer that question. And so also with these processes, we need to make sure that, okay, if I do these tests, if I'm looking for vulnerability A, B, and C, how can I do, if I do a repeat of that test, if I go back to the developer, oh yeah, we remediated this, okay, let's test again, A, B, and C. Well, if I skip B, or if I don't know about B, I need to make sure that as a web app pen tester, I'm being consistent, you can uh, put out a product that's consistent and uh, I know that it's gonna be covered for all the tests I should be looking for. So, of course, OWASP being a body of standards, well, not by standards, but an open source uh, repository of uh, many goodness, they have a testing guide. Version four is currently out. And so version four, they go through uh, the top 10 uh, lists. They go through the, um, not really a step-by-step -step of how do I test SQL injection, but saying SQL injection, this is a vulnerability for you know, exploiting SQL weaknesses. This is how you would test that. This is how you also test this popular ways to do uh, cross site scripting attacks with it encoding, double encoding. So using as a framework for your organization, helping use that to refine your organization's policy for testing really helps to make sure that, okay, our policy has this, but I've seen in the wild that from the top 10 and from the PCI, they recently put out new guidance, uh, using it from like, you know, depending on your verticals and like your um, audits and like, how you're reporting, you might need to use things from the PCI or NIST or even pulling from OWASP. So you're using these techniques. It's not really uh, prescriptive. You must do this, you must do that, but definitely adding these things from all these different kinds of standards to help make a more holistic approach to your testing procedures so you're having more coverage and making sure you're catching things as they grow and evolve in web technologies. So learning with Matilda. Step one, tools. Got it. Techniques, techniques and procedures. We got the OWASP top, uh, top 10, we have the testing guide. Now we have Samurai, it's up and running. Utility is running. Step three, kind of shaky, not really too sure what's going on there. Step four, profit. <laughs> we are highly paid web app testers, woo! <laughs> no, it's only that easy, right? So how do we actually learn with Matilda? You know, as I mentioned earlier, it's a, there are vulnerabilities broken out. So, you know, say, um, I can't remember offhand, I should have. Jeremy just put out a uh, new vulnerability. I can't uh, remember the new vulnerability, but I want to test this. I want to see, okay, I see this new vulnerability in the wild. I don't really want to go to test fire or some application and kind of hope that this vulnerability is there and exploitable. So with that, I want to refine my, my craft against XSS or broken authentication or SQL injection. And so there's the application, the website, is very good at helping you go to this, the vulnerabilities that you want to test upon and try to help you understand. It'll go to the web page, but it's not like, well, here's a web page, figure it out, Google, right? No, so it has uh, different hints and walkthroughs. So if you already know kind of what you're doing, you can you know, try testing, you know, it might be vulnerable to XSS or SQL injection or a multitude of different vulnerabilities. But at the very top, as we'll see in the demo, there's uh, hints you can do, walkthroughs, videos, and so it really helps break down for like the, the person who's not familiar with all these kind of things. What does it take? You know, do I need to Google? Do I need to go this? Do I need to buy that? You know, things, there's things that are helpful as far as books and videos and walkthroughs, but this helps to be an all-in-one solution, not an all-in-one solution, but helps to help the user as much as possible understand these vulnerabilities and how to exploit them and it's with them safely in an environment where they're able to test these things and learn from them. All right, so I'll try to do some demos. Hopefully. And I 
just have, um, well, my, my machine is this Beatmark Fusion uh, with that VM. But I, um, I just have the stock Samurai uh, 3.1 distribution installed on my machine. And so it's uh, by default. An older version of Matilde is uh, installed on there, but the current version right now is 2, I uh, can't read that far, uh, 6.19. And so this is a continually evolving environment. You definitely, uh, the benefit most from this is getting the latest version. And it's basically just drop into the WW directory or depending on where you're hosting your apps at. But there's all kinds of um, documentation and YouTube videos online showing how you're able to um, update Matilda Day, things you want to go through. So as I mentioned, um, let's go through some, I'm currently uh, I think Chrome. So let's. Which one is? All right. So on the left hand side, we can see here we have uh, the top 10 for the OWASP 2013, the 2010, 2007 web services for Soap and Rest, uh, HTML5, and um, XML, and other kind of based uh, vulnerabilities, not really specifically for all its top 10, but definitely things we've seen in a while that we want to learn and grow from. Uh, documentation, and uh, he's great about doing different kind of things. Real quickly, I just want to see if you put in here what he added. Uh, yep, so the recent vulnerability that's, uh, that was released and kind of, I don't want to say widely known, but still out there, is the path relative style sheet injection. And so these kind of things that if we don't know about, we can't test. So having uh, a very well um, supported community and having this kind of applications, you can t test this and know, okay, this is how I test this. I can go back to my developers and say, hey guys um, and gals, you guys, guys really need to uh, stop being knuckleheads because you guys really need to fix it. So we'll, uh, we can browse through here. We see all the different kind of attacks we have to test with. And we'll just, uh, Go on down to uh, classified scripting. We'll go to reflected first order, and we'll just do a DNS lookup. Serving size. Not with me today, I was working this morning. Or not with me today. Do you need to be there? What's that? Do you need to be able to send DNS or No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't need to. Go! Uh, don't quite know what to do. So up here you can kind of see up here it says uh, home login register is good for like say a bank or any kind of uh, authenticated uh, website. Uh, toggle hints, uh, show pop-up hints, toggle security, and enforce SSL and reset the database and show log. So the initial state for Matilda is very uh, simple to pop. In various ways, you you don't want to have you know the level five you know strong government security clearance uh, protected website if you're trying to learn. You definitely want to have the easy approach to learn the different vulnerabilities and not be discouraged or like say oh this is too hard I can't figure this out. 
you definitely want to have the ability to do these kind of things and build upon what you learn incrementally to do the more complex and more uh, intensive attacks. And so with that, we'll go through a few attacks here and we'll, uh, I can go ahead and show the hints. We'll talk about hints. I like hints. And we'll see if it pops up. So while we're waiting for that, let's do some lookups. Local host. BMS. So with that, um, it shouldn't be too hard to uh, do different attacks. You know, unfortunately, I can't really show as quickly as I would like to the different vulnerabilities. But as soon as you hit the the show walkthroughs, you'll see all the kinds of uh, you'll see all the. Um, Hints, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, things you can perform with that, how you would do those kind of things, and why you would want to do certain things in certain situations. For example, for uh, cross-site scripting, there's a lot of built-in mitigations for different web browsers. So if you're testing a website and you're proxying for, for a website, Chrome might be blocking it, but this will be vulnerable. If I'm testing with Firefox, it is still vulnerable, but Firefox says, oh, let's show that alert pop-up box. And so you need to keep in mind as well that it's not enough to just test through Chrome and call it good enough. I mean, IE, a really sad tool, is still a valid tool to help test things that you want find protections as you would in Chrome or Firefox. But even uh, other browsers like Mantra through OWASP help to uh, show that you know if the website isn't catching, if your client side tool isn't catching protecting you, it's still vulnerable if the user is on some kind of other browser or intentionally trying to exploit the application. So it's still, uh, it's still a deal to show and do testing through different kind of website uh, web browsers and show them how it can be potentially exploited. So if I'm new to the business, I'm going to say, I have heard a lot about this XS test thing. Sounds pretty sweet. So I'm going to go to the, this web page as we're at now, and we'll click on cross-site scripting hints. So now I have a lot more information than when I started. My first time here, I just had a, a text box and a, and a button. I had no idea what to do. You know, I could do ping 8888, ping Google, great. But I didn't know what I would need to be doing next. And so that's part of the problem as far as learning how to do without testing is you don't know where you need to go with this. And so as in here, we have all this documentation. Built into the website itself, it's not pulling off through Google. My adapter is down. So I don't really like wait for Google to pull up a web page or a Wikipedia article. I have all the information here built in, so the user at self pace can learn from these kind of things and learn, oh, okay. So that's how I do the, um, the attack. I uh, pull some JavaScript, <laughs> do some JavaScript, and I pop up alert box with XSS. That's how I get that to work. And if it's uh, going to work for me, we'll do some little demos here. But as you can see, it goes very well into depth, and many other pages have these kind of uh, documentation and built-in help in line, so you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to Google this and come back and chase down rabbit holes. It's all right there with you. And so everybody learns differently. I learn from reading, other people learn from videos, other people learn from doing their hands on keyboards. And so with this way, it really does help <coughs> as best as possible integrate all those different learning methods into one cohesive area. And so with that, there's also YouTube links. I don't have, you know, as I said, never on YouTube right now, but if I were to click that link, I would get a link showing me how I would do an HP only cookies attack uh, with a cross site scripting. So with that, Jeremy uh, does a lot of narration for these videos. He goes through and explains to the user, you know, not really like in a condescending manner, but like he also was really passionate about this uh, project and wants everybody to learn from this and from Matilde and what it can offer to the community and help us to, as a whole, developers, um, testers as well, to really just able, be able to um, learn from these kind of, um, uh, learn from each other from these kind of attacks and how we can better ourselves in our applications. And so, uh, command ejection. So let's try to, let's try to see if we can get some good magics here. All right, I'm just going to try to ping our local host. And with any luck, we should see below that, we 
you should see a lookup for our local host. That's important to show that the, um, and this is a, a user generated field, so the user has full control of what they put into this field. It's up to the developer, not necessarily the web browser, to protect against the sanitized input of what the user is putting into that field. So a host could be google.com, an IP address, and um, from here we would see that we would get a return field of the, um, all right, that's the thing. So we see session time dial, no service could be reached, great. So that's fine, that's what we want to see, right? We want to see the user entering the data, uh, we look up DNS and we get some, uh, the server returning back some message. So we know that somewhere in its application, when I put this information in, it's going out doing some kind of NS lookup or some kind of command. So it's talking to the host OS, doing this information, querying it back, and who knows what kind of sanitation is, is performed on that user's input to perform this lookup. So we would expect to see that uh, you know the website author is like obviously just entering Google.com or MSN or an IP address. No one would ever do attacks that would help compromise the website. I mean, why would anybody do that? That's not fun at all. So we can see also as well on uh, Firefox that we have return that same field back. And so now I've entered in a, a basic uh, cross-site tripping attack. And so we wait patiently, so patiently, for the website to come back to us. So Chrome, um, out of the box, up to date, uh, return that. All right, that's, I don't know what happened. So with that, the attack went through. We didn't get kind of errors, we didn't get any kind of feedback. The attack went through, however, comma, Chrome, being as nice as it is, Google does no evil, kind of sometimes, they also protect the user from these basic attacks. So we can see that we tried our, our uh, JavaScript, we tried to, to generate an alert pop-up box, nothing happened. Firefox, a little different. So we can see Firefox returned one. We were able to, there was no sanitized input, we put through JavaScript, and we can see one popped up. Could be a pro no, like, oh great, I see a one. That's not a, that's not a big deal, right? No. But let's go back to the point of testing various browsers. If I were to do my test through Chrome, looks good, no pop-ups, right? But through Firefox, obviously that website still is vulnerable. I mean, depending on your tools, you still may have caught that, depending on what, what was ran or what happened. But still, it's important to note that it's not just you do one tool and go through. And even automated tools have their manual testing methods as well. So it's very good to have a multiple set of eyes on the same product, testing the same, pr the same procedures and method to be consistent and to make sure you're having great coverage to show that you're actually testing and not just you know, running and gunning with uh, what you need to do to get that test out of your, out of your queue. So we'll go through and we'll go, uh, this is Google again, so we'll show a log. We'll go through a, a second order of reflective attacks. And so uh, Matilda, so helpful, has a log of everything that the user puts into the application. So as you can imagine, we'll probably see our 127.0.0.1 or look up IP address for our local host. And we'll also see the script tags we push, we push through on the uh, input to see. However, comma, it depends on how the website handles the user's input. So while we let that spin up, that's it's, yeah, it's spinning up, all right? We'll do the same in Firefox. We'll browse slowly. It's like in Jurassic Park. I know Linux. She goes through it and it's like, oh, I know Linux too. All right. So slowly just browsing through. There's no dinosaurs here. All right. So while we wait for that to load, there's a lot of different projects that we have available to us. So as I mentioned, you know, big deal. We had a one pop up. Who cares, right? So there's a lot of different vectors of attack that could be happening through cross-site scripting. Now, if I were a bad guy, 
I'm not a tester. That's you know, what I do. I would try to say, okay, I can get that one to happen. What if I were to pass through that attack? You know, modify not a alert box one, but if I try to do a uh, a hook, what is there's a project called uh, Beef. Beef is a great project, open source as well. And so with that, if you have an in that with a classified scripting, you might have an in to hook that user. So um, try to quickly surmise that with uh, Beef. It allows you to inject payloads into uh, various different scenarios. One of them is uh, cross-thread scripting. And so rather than pushing through uh, alert one, I put in this JavaScript that pops and loads. So this user browses this website. I inject in through, uh, through various methods. I, popped, I pop in through this hooking uh, JavaScript. So the user doesn't really understand what happens. Maybe a pop-up, nothing happens maybe at all. But now, on the back end as the attacker, I now have control of that user's PC. I've exploited the website that users browse, and now I can exploit through that different ways, and from there I can retrieve credentials, tokens, any number of things, that through a simple alert one, I compromise that to compromise the user, and potentially the website itself. There's a number of ways to be compromised, and so while it may seem trivial, uh, one popped up, it's really not trivial at all. So, as we saw with that DNS lookup, entered in our output, entered it in our, out, our input, and received out nothing. But we browsed through this log, and this log shows all the user's input that was entered through various means. And so, Chrome didn't help us this time, and again, through here, we just browsed the website. We didn't do anything at all. We just browsed this website. If I pass this URL to you, boom, it's gonna pop up. Pop up a one, or it could be a beef hook. So we need to be careful that when you poke around with different tools and different uh, pages and try to do as, be as comprehensive as possible. So Chrome, pop up. Pop up from my uh, from other side, from Firefox and Chrome. And here we can go to Firefox, pop up. We expect that, and pop up as well. So just browsing the websites were compromised, not even doing anything at all. So it really is um, a great way to help learn and to grow that you might have known, not known how to do these kind of attacks, but through this platform, it really does help the user to learn and grow and test on themselves because it's hard to, you know, I don't want to go to the Amazon Web Cloud, I don't want to do all this and blah, blah, blah. It's very simple as a live CD even to spin it up and do a little bit of testing or just play around. There's no cops, there's no, um, you know, you have to worry about Anybody seeing you or being worried that you're going to do it wrong? It's this VM all enclosed. You can certainly give it internet access if you want to to do different things, but no network access, never access is necessary. But you, from here, you can do all kinds of testing that you need to do. So let me try to pull tab over. Go back to my uh, slide deck where I have the uh, questions, or uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, links and uh, other things that help my. Let's see if I can. No! All right. Let's throw this over real quick. Push this back over. So we have time for the other demos, but definitely check it out. It's well worth the time, and uh, very simple to throw it up and start playing around with it. So links here, we have Matilda to the OWASH project website. We have uh, Samurai through InGuardians and a collection of different people like Kevin Johnson, other people who contribute to this platform, and they're hoping to be more active as they have in the past, but 3.1 is coming the, the new version, and 4.0 is coming out here pretty soon. The uh, OWASH testing guide version 4, the top 10, the PCI, P-Test, NIST, and uh, I think that also helped me as well was this 12-part uh, series on Matilda Day. So Jeremy Druin had a thing down, um, 
I think it was an uh, ISSA Charlotte. And they went through a 12 part series, like one Saturday, just going through Matilda and different, different kind of tests and helping to demonstrate different kind of vulnerabilities and going through this far more in depth than I showed today. But definitely worth checking out, still very relevant. You know, today even we're having problems with XSS and other things that we thought would be simple to fix, but still have it for whatever reason. Uh, that's my email and my Twitter. And um, any questions? So does this actually come on a live CD or is there an installation process? Uh, so Matilda, uh, you can just download from GitHub, but uh, with Samurai, it's kind of built into the product. And so Samurai has DVWA, Matilda, and other projects. And so it can be run as a live CD on through Samurai, or it can be on your host OS uh, with Apache spin up. Uh, Matilda, so it's, it's very uh, low friction to help uh, spin up in a multitude of ways. What language is it programmed in? Do you know? Uh, I think it's PHP. A lot of the, the back end. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, do they also suffer VM image? It looks like they might. Uh, yeah, for Samurai, there's like a VMware image you just pull down, but you know they should be able to uh, flick around to like um, VirtualBox or. Not, yeah, uh, can, uh, offhand, not too sure though. But Matilda has like a, a source for it. You can just pull just Matilda down and, and summarizes. But this happens to be that you know for a work he said a testing environment, having Samurai for like Zap and Burp and other things you want to test out with proxying and other kind of attacks you want to do like SQL Map. That's all built into the Samurai platform. So having that uh, accessible from one, you know, I was like, oh, app get install. Uh, I don't know what you need. So having all that with all one package really eliminates having like. Oh, I need to do this. My dependencies are broken, and I mean frustration, and I give up. <laughs> so it's definitely having that, you know, all together is very successful. Anybody else? I have a kind of technical question. So, um, do you know if on the Samurai image it's actually listening on the public interface? Because I mean, I'd love to be able to get this from a colleague VM and you know communicate with the Samurai VM, but it's not listening on like you know the Ethernet. Yeah, it's like a VMware image, so how do you want to uh, configure that virtual machine and some different interfaces or bridging and across or natting across? It's just like a standard VM, but like a, a Linux distribution of that VM. So anyway, how you configure a VM would be the same way you would for a Samurai. So you could throw it in the public domain if you want, or if you want to put it on like your, your internal network and scan, scan, scan. Oh my gosh, who's not in here? <laughs> Definitely could be a sad face for somebody. Like, ah, I was just testing. Hold on, just hold on. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Check it out, and I appreciate your time. Thanks.